We're on our way to Cape Verde. As you can see, nothing around us. And I was thinking this week we will discuss the electricity on the boat. We do have a lot of electricity on the boat, but how effective is all the systems that are installed? So first I'm going to show you the systems that we installed and then real life experience of what we're experiencing as, we, as we're sailing, whether it's actually effective or not. Or why do you need to have so many? Or maybe you don't. <laughs> Keep on watching. Here is our two Victron 3 kilowatt inverters connected in parallel, uh, essentially making it a 6 kilowatt unit. And then uh, this is our main shunt to go to uh, measure all our amps that's going in, in, into the boat and leaving the boat at the same time. What we have is our two shunts here. We have positive and negative fuses for safety purposes. And then we have two shunts as the two, two um, fuses for the charge, for, for charging. Uh, we have, uh, we can, at, at the point in time, we can have over 600 amps going into the batteries. At the back here, at the back we have our solar regulators. We have another solar regulator against the bulk in here. And yeah, if you just go to the yeah. we need so we have our three solar regulators. Yeah, they at, they at the point can give you close to a, probably on a good sunny day you get probably more than a kilowatt of, of power going into the batteries. And then these are our side disconnect units. So we we know batteries are full they will disconnect your charge and or let's say you have a fault you and the voltage maybe just keeps on rising these batteries will also these um charge disconnects will also disconnect to um protect the batteries from over voltage your um battery protect for your discharge that's your discharge battery protect unit there mm -hmm. and then on top we have your battery management controller we still have the original alternator and you can see the brackets maybe more clearly here for the original alternator and then the v-belt for for the original alternator and then here is the new alternator here is the brackets um, that, and the tightening screw, so this little bracket needed and this little bracket over here was also required. And then of course it has its own little belt cover, as you can see there, nice belt cover. And exactly the same alternator. Both of the alternators is 160 amps. So at this moment it seems like we will get in 320 amps from one engine. So, and if we start in both engines, we should then get 
what's that now? 640 amps out of the two engines. Again, yes, it's sterling. The big cables from the alternator is coming in here, so there's a big terminal down here. And then this goes to the starter battery to charge the starter battery, the one below that little sensor uh, wire. So it will first top up the starter battery and then this side over here is going to the house battery uh, or domestic battery as they call it and you can set the battery type here and I've got a whole lot of battery types that this one can do so we are setting it for 9 hopefully because we've got live power batteries and this one then will will charge our batteries. There's a lot of monitoring wires coming in and out on both sides. This side is a couple of wires to monitor the battery temperatures and the alternator temperatures and things like that. Something else that I might need to tell you or show you guys is that the wind generators. Here is the wind generator uh, regulators. So they come in here and then I convert from the wind. You can see it is 40 amp from the wind and you can also put solar on, 20 amps from the solar and that will then show us how much wind we are getting, whether it's working or not working and then also what is the battery levels, which at this moment it doesn't it doesn't show the right thing, so they are still busy commissioning this one as well and then for the wind generators we have a manual brake so if we want to brake it we can just switch it on and then it will break. We are heading now for Kaivert and we've been now sailing for quite a while on this kind of direction, just with the wind. 100% downwind. Uh, the wind is coming from the back. <coughs> if you look, we've got our Code D and the Genoa up, wing on wing. So they both are flying. The main is down. And we, we had to start the engines a couple of times uh, once to, to charge the batteries again and the second time just because there was no wind. So we had to motor and we expect to be motoring in about one or two days almost full time because we are getting to the doldrums. But what I want to tell you guys now is when we go downwind as you can see in the back the wind generators doesn't work. We going almost if they stay knots of wind, through wind, we go about five knots down the wind, and five knots is not enough for them to start. And even if they do start, they they provide maybe 0.1 to 0.5 amperes, which is not good enough. At night maybe it's enough to not maintain the instruments, but it's it's trickle feeding. In the mornings, so the solar panels. Let me show you the solar panels. In the mornings when the sun is still coming up at the east, like we are now, more or less morning, you will see that the boom is shadowing quite a lot of solar panels. And I'll show you in this afternoon how these big sails are actually shadowing the rest of the panels. So we don't get that much from the solar as well. Let me show you. The ones in the back is in the sun. The boom is covering those. And it looks like I'm covering one too. So four is out. What influence does it have on our charging? Out of the 2000 watts, we only get 600. And our instruments is taking 200. What did we get in Cape Town? Let's see. And about 1300. Out of 2200. It's now just past 12, about half past 12. No idea what time zone, but we now according to GMT minus one, if I look at the degrees. So let's say it is one o'clock, um, between 12 and one. And this is what's happening here, when the sun is more or less up in the middle. And since we are now very close to the equator, the sun is more now to the south. So everything on the northern side is shaded. Let's see how this is looking. It 
it's about three o'clock now, uh, three, four o'clock. And this is what the sun is doing at this moment. We still got our big sails up. But what happened is now the sun has shifted. So the front panels is not working anymore. How we configure it is that the front panels is on one MPPT and then the middle section is on another MPPT and then the back section, the glass panels, is also on their own MPPT. So what happens now, the front one is basically shut down. It does get some light because the, there is some light coming through the sails. Uh, it is generating electricity but not efficient and uh, optimal but you can see the ones at the back and the middle section they, they do get um, some solar so they generating but again wind turbines not working not at all We're still trying to look for the trade winds, but if you do anything where your parent wind is higher than your true wind, then those buggers are working quite well. Each of them is, is averaging at this moment in, we're doing around 10 knots of wind and 15 apparent wind. They're bringing in 7 to 8 amperes, constantly, for free. So now we don't need even closely need to think of starting generators. We have our ice makers on, our laptops has been working all day, the hard drives has been working all day, and we had quite a ride. Okay, what is the, the verdict on the amount of solar panels, wind generators, and alternators, and all of those things? We have to keep in mind at this moment we've been keeping just 100% wind down basically, right? For the last <laughs> almost two weeks. Two weeks. <laughs> just, just follow the wind, the trade winds to the equator. So we were basically in an angle that's always uh, northeasterly direction. So the sun was always coming up on that side and always setting down on North that side. Western. What I showed you today and yesterday is a typical day for us the last two weeks. And yes, I, I feel still good that we have all the solar that we put in. Because every single time you move a sail, some of the others is getting the sun. Every time that you move like this and the sail moves out of the way, you get sun on the, on the solar panels. It is not always that you get it fully open and it's also not always that the same one is open all the time, right? Yeah. The wind chains, of course, <laughs> what <laughs> do they say? <laughs> May have very what, the good downwind and following seas and if you have following seas, no wind generator. <laughs> but soon we will go into the that north. It forms but it doesn't generate. <laughs> it goes. If we go over across the equator then we will be on on beating into the wind so we will we will be tacking and not jiving and that that's when the wind generator will then kick in again and help us a lot but for now it's quiet we did start the engine now three times once to actually give us some boost on electricity again and the other times we had to motor because the wind just died down. To, As boost, to boost the wind. <laughs> yeah, to boost the wind. Yeah, like now it's, it's busy dying down. We, 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 we're on the last breath of the wind before we hit the doldrums. And that's it for the electricity. We can still cook and clean. <laughs> Was
손, 손, 예리 손 잡고 있어. 예리, 그래서 이불 손 오늘. 이게 무슨 